It's an industry that most people don't think about until they absolutely have to when their car breaks down, or as has been the case recently in southern Ontario, when baffling news stories report on tow trucks being shot at or set on fire. Yes, you heard that right. With us now to explain what in heaven's name is going on, we welcome Mark Graves, president of the Provincial Towing Association of Ontario and the owner of the automotive and towing company Pine Ridge Services. And we thank you for driving seven hours from Sault Ste. Marie to be at our studio here tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Good to me, meet Steve. you, Mark. Well, that last question I asked in the introduction feels like a good place to start. What in heaven's name is going on out there? Well, there's definitely uh, been an escalation in violence within the towing industry over the last few years. It's been growing and, um, you know, burn tow trucks and, and um, shootings and, and things. And we're really hoping we can get it under wraps before it escalates out into the uh, general public. And Indeed. Why is it happening? There's a combination of reasons for it. Um, this winter has been a, a quieter winter, not a lot of weather. and there's a lot of tow trucks out there with no regulation and how to get into the industry. Anybody can buy a tow truck. So when the competition heats up, then people start fighting over the, the minimal amount of work that's out there. Do you think this is organized crime? It's been alluded that way. Uh, we have no proof of that, so it's possible. But it could also just be a bunch of hotheads looking for their piece of the action. I think it's a combination of, of many things. There was a lawyer who was shot at Yes. Uh, what's, what, tell us the story. What happened there? Uh, that was a lawyer that was uh, working with insurance companies to fight the towing industry and um, specific groups within the industry apparently didn't like it. And uh, that was a pretty bold move, but uh, yeah, that lawyer's office is no longer in business as a result of They it. shut the place down, they right? They did, yes. They shut the whole law firm down because they just didn't, they didn't want any piece of this anymore. Yes. Hmm. How do you think things got to this point? Well, like everything else, uh, things just grow and build uh, until, until it becomes a problem. And uh, uh, with a lack of regulation within the industry, the, uh, anybody's welcome to come in. I, you know, as a, as a company owner, I can hand you a set of keys and put you out on the road right now, Steve, with zero training, zero experience, and you can be a tow truck driver and you can work for the police. But at some point, doesn't usually sanity prevail and it doesn't, you know, in most businesses, people aren't going around shooting each other. Well, one hopes, but, uh, you know, we've, <laughs> as an association, we've worked really hard to try to elevate the industry and, uh, and um, you know, it hasn't happened from within the industry. So that's one of the reasons that we've uh, engaged with uh, government and other stakeholders to try to get regulation in place that's going to curb this. So just to be clear, right now, if anybody wanted to be, quote unquote, a tow truck company operator, they just go buy a truck and they're off to the races. Yes. There's no certification, no regulation. No. No, no license you have to purchase in order to do this? In 17 out of 444 municipalities in Ontario, there's a licensing requirement, but it's an individual municipality licensing requirement and there's really no standards and, and constant standards throughout those municipalities. Hmm. Mark, what's a chaser? A chaser is, is a slang terminology for uh, a company or an operator that listens to scanners and races after accidents. So um, they hear about an accident on uh, a radio and a group of them try to, whoever gets there first kind of gets the job. And, the name, that's where the name Chaser comes from. Very dangerous type of, of business model because you're speeding, you're, you, you could be breaking many Highway Traffic Act laws trying to get to that accident scene and, and your livelihood depends on you getting there first. How much of this wild, wild west stuff do you think is happening because of chasers? Uh, a good chunk of it. Most yeah, of it? Probably most of it, yes. Hmm. When a tow truck operator arrives at the scene of a car accident, let's say it's on a 400 series highway, big highway, uh, that is, I mean, that's, that can be a pretty dangerous place, obviously, right? I mean, never mind the accidents happening, you've got people whizzing by at 100, 120 kilometers an hour. What are the protocols that a responsible tow truck operator follows from that moment? Well, properly trained and responsible operators will um, try to 
alleviate dangers by getting off the road as far as they can. And that presents a problem in the 401, 400 sectors because there's not a lot of shoulders. Uh, so typically you want um, MTO services or police services to help to guide traffic or, or direct things around you as you're working. Um, if you're the first one on the scene, are you allowed to essentially tow the car off to the shoulder without a police presence? There is no regulation now. You can do whatever you want. So you can? You can, yes. Now, you've, you're obviously here today because you're trying to get the word out that you think this sector needs some oversight. What would yes. you like to see happen? Well, the, the um, Provincial Towing Association about a year and a half ago engaged um, with uh, stakeholders from within the industry, MTO, OPP, various uh, uh, CAA and, and various ministries to try to build a regulation for the towing industry. We've tried for more than 10 years to, to regulate within the industry and uh, the industry is very diverse and, and, uh, and it hasn't worked. So we really need to, to get the government to step up and help us with a regulation model that is going to give everybody clear cut rules to to live by. Any idea how many operators there are in the province of Ontario? You know, nobody knows, to be honest. Um, there's no proper registration system for tow trucks with the MTO, so we don't really know exactly how many tow trucks are uh, are uh, registered in the province of Ontario, and and we can guess at the number of drivers, but uh, but it's it's a guess, and that's that's the best we can do. Is it fair to say that most of the operators in the province are not larger operations with a fleet of vehicles, they're maybe just a, you know, one person operation, one truck operation? When you are out in, in Northern Ontario, yes, you've got a lot of smaller operators. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the cities and, and, and the GTA area, you tend to have uh, larger companies with, with multiples of trucks mm -hmm. that are out there. Is there anything that any other province in this country has done that you think is a model for what we should do? There's not really. Um, there's different provinces and states that have various different um, legislation rules, but there's very little um, that uh, we've got to pull from a lot of different areas to do it. Well, can we make a bit of a, a checklist here? Sure. What do you want to see done? The government of Ontario, if it sees it your way, should do what? A licensing of companies, towing companies, uh, a licensing of all of their drivers, uh, training and safety standard, implementation of training and safety standards, and, uh, and a system of uh, retribute or um, um, way of, of um, Fines, pen penalizing yeah. the, the, the bad operators, the, the bad apples. Okay, let's go through this right now. So licensing, right now you don't have to have a license to be a, truck, to be a tow truck driver in the province. In specific municipalities, you have to have a license, but there's no requirements for it other than paying a fee. So you would like the province to pass a law saying you want to be in this business, you have to get a license from the province of Ontario. Yes. Not just for the company, but for the driver of the truck as well. Yes. Okay, a special license for that. Training and safety, who do you want to see do that? Well, that's one of the reasons that we've engaged various stakeholders. Um, um, Rackmaster is a, a towing industry leader for training and, uh, and we've got them working with us um, to say, you know, it may be that companies can do their own training, but they may need to have a train the trainer course or something. It's about training and documentation and, and, uh, and, and safety. Um, it's not about who can do it. Um, it's about it being done and making sure everybody's aware of what needs to be done. So you're not saying the province of Ontario has to set up a new bureaucracy to train tow truck drivers? No. no. Just put Everything that we've worked on so far, Steve, has been a design within systems that are already in place within governments. That's, that's what we've been... We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, we're just trying to get on the wheel. Got it. Uh, penalties? What have you got in mind there? Well, again, that's, we'll have a, the group of stakeholders involved in that, but uh, penalties would be like a demerit system, no different than a driver's license system. Uh, if you're doing things wrong, you earn demerit points, if you earn enough demerit points, you might uh, be able to have your license revoked. And, or have your truck or, taken away at some point? Well, I don't think you could ever take a truck away, but, um, but uh, you could certainly stop people from doing business in the province of Ontario if it's unethical. Hmm. And presumably the uh, Ontario Provincial Police and local police forces would be responsible for enforcing these laws? And the MTO. 
and the Ministry of Transportation. The Ministry of Transportation, yeah. Of Ontario, okay. Have you had any meetings with anybody at Queen's Park about this yet? We've had multiple meetings. Um, we had our uh, one of our first um, productive meetings in December, early December of last year. Um, we had all of our stakeholders at this meeting. Who was at the meeting from the government side? Uh, Ministry of G Government and Consumer Services, the MTO, the OPP. M ministers or just staff? Uh, staff. Staff, okay. Staff. So do you know whether any ministers are seized of this issue yet? Uh, yeah, we, um, we attended, the Provincial Towing Association attended Roma in um, late January. Rural Ontario Municipalities yes. Conference. Okay. Yeah, we attended the conference and we met with multiple ministers there. Um, so they know about it? They know about it. They know that there's an issue with the industry. Um, we've had no, uh, none of the ministries or the ministers um, said they were opposed to anything. Um, we've been asked how close we are to writing legislation. So, you know, it's really right now we're working with them and we're just waiting to see which ministry is most apt to take it on and, and move forward with it. Well, you say nobody's opposed to it, but that doesn't mean they're prepared to champion it. You need somebody inside government to champion it if you want it to happen. And that we're, that's what we're working on right now. We're hoping to have an answer by the end of this month. End of this month. H have, you, have you sort of had any conversations that lead you to believe that somebody's prepared to champion this thing? Yeah. Yes, we have. We've had conversations. Um, the, the, the real issue here is there's a lot of different, it, this crosses a lot of ministries. Uh, the Solicitor General oversees the OPP. Right. Uh, you've got Ministry of Government and Consumer Services that oversees the motor and public and the consumer. You've got the Ministry of Transportation that owns the highways. So there's a lot of ministries and a lot of crossover. And one of the things that this new PC government's trying to do is, is remove silos and get everybody working together. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to work with each of the groups but we still need to know who's going to champion it. Well, this is the issue, right? Because on the one hand, it's 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 good to have, uh, you know, a lot of cooks in the kitchen in order to make sure that all the bases are covered, if I can mix my metaphors there. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's also a way that governments are able to say, well, that's their problem. That's not, we don't really deal with that. They deal with that. You need to get, you know. And, and, and therein lies the industry problem yeah. is if there are no rules, how do you, how do you know what's right or wrong? How do you how do you move forward? Um, the industry's not moving forward. Um, you know, a good example: the the OPP in 1970. It took three weeks of basic training to get a badge and a gun and be out on the road with a senior officer. Now it takes two years of police call police services training and 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 years of of ongoing training. The towing industry has has not even kept up with the evolution of, of all the safety and, and requirements of the road and, and everything that's required to keep the motoring public safe. I don't mean this to be a smart aleck question, I really don't, but you've seen how much difficulty this government has had rolling out new license plates. And what you're looking for is somewhat more complicated than simply rolling out new license plates. Does this, I mean, do you, are you rather depressed about the prospects of them being able to put the puck in the net here? No, you know, um, we worked with the previous government at two different times to introduce bills, um, and uh, they both got they both got lost. They went and made it to second reading. Um, so I actually feel more um, um, excited about this because we're we're talking to ministers. We're actually talking to to government people and and moving things forward. Um, We've got their attention, and, and all this media is certainly helping them hmm. to, raise, to raise the awareness that something needs to be done. How old's your business? 21 years. 21 years you've been doing this? Yes. Okay. You drove a tow, a tow truck, I presume, at some point? Yeah. Uh, I bought a towing company, and I hopped in the truck and started towing. Right away? Right away. I, you know, the guy gave me the keys, and I started towing. How long ago was that? Well, the first time I got in a tow truck, I was just turning 16. But, and, and even at that point, it was the same idea. So in 35 years of towing, nothing's changed. I can hand you a set of keys and you can go tow just like I did 35 years ago, just like I did when I bought the company. You know, the first day I bought the towing company, I got a call at two o'clock in the morning for, to go out for an impaired driving charge. The officers didn't even know I bought the company. You know, there's no questions. Oh, you got a tow truck? Yeah, you can tow it away. How old were you at that time? 
Um, 28. Huh. Okay. <laughs> when you were 16 and doing it for the first time, how did you have any idea what to do? I didn't. I, honestly, I didn't. My boss sent me out in a tow truck. I didn't even know how to use the winch. So I hooked the chain up and pulled it out the way my dad taught me <laughs> and drove away with it. And it worked okay? And it worked. There, yeah, yeah. The people were happy and, you know, but vehicles have changed. Equipment's changed. Um, you know, the, the trucks that we're using now are, are very sophisticated, not like in the 70s. How much does a decent tow truck cost these days? They start at 150000 for a huh. small one. Um, the, the new 100-ton rotator that they use for the big transport accidents can push $1.8 For a single unit? For a single unit. Wow. How many in your fleet? We have about 12 trucks. 12 trucks? Yeah. So you got a lot of physical material. <laughs> you got a big physical plant there to deal with. Yeah. Huh. you got a lot of money riding on the province being able to figure this out, don't you? You know, the, the entire industry is subject to what changes the, um, the government makes, whether it's the OPP or, you know, every business model is based on how we've done business for years. And there's lots of different business models within the towing industry. Um, the towing industry has survived them all, but some of the repercussions from those changes that have been made without consultation with the towing industry have possibly caused some of what we have today. Mm. So, you know, we can adjust, the industry can adjust. We just need to get something that's concrete that we know what we're working with. Let me ask you one last question, which is when you saw that picture in the paper of that tow truck that had been torched and was completely, you know, it was a, it was a write off, it was a wreck. What'd you think when you saw that picture? It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's terrible because chances are that person's lost a good chunk of his livelihood and possibly there's no insurance coverage or anything for it. So, you know, um, it's, uh, that's one of about 50. There's been about 50 trucks burned in the last six mm -hmm. months or so. So, you know, it's, it's um, something's got to be done and something's got to be done sooner than later. And we need the, uh, we need the government now to, to champion this and, and take it and move forward. Well, we thank you for making the long haul to TVO to explain to our viewers and listeners all about this. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate That's it. Mark Graves, who's the president of the Provincial Towing Association of Ontario. And if you're stuck in Sault Ste. Marie, you might want to call Pine Ridge <laughs> Services because he'll help you out of your jam. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.